often do you do planning? Sit down and just, just plot out in the future? Because it sounds like your, your characters <laughs> push you around a little bit, to tell you the truth. Well, I, I have this theory that all of your books exist complete in your subconscious. And the mm -hmm. thing you have to do is get out of your own way. If you try to control it too much, and of course you get panicked every time you write a book because, my God, it's 100,000 words. How am I going to get it? Is it going to turn out? So you do all these plans. And what you have to do is, is say, okay, I think I'm going in this direction, and then start to write the book and see where it goes. Because otherwise, you're overwriting your instincts, and your instincts are going to tell the best story. So, um, I, you know, I was an English major for a long time, so of course I always try to think of the theme, and it's never. Welcome to Temptation was going to be about female sexuality, and it turned out to be about mothers. And you'd kind of look at it and go, no, no, I'm going to drag it back. You know, go, oh, mothers, and go that way. So it's... Uh, a lot of the, the fun about writing fiction is that discovery phase when things pop up and you think, ooh, and you know, it opens again like a flower. It just becomes more than it was and more than it was. So you have to trust yourself. Well, that, that sounds all well and good, but recently you've also been working with collaborators, partners. That changes so, it. So, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so now you've got a whole new ballgame because yeah. you have to be bouncing these ideas and they, these, this other, these other people or other person has to somehow either agree with you or at least agree to go in different directions. Well, first of all, you write with people that um, are like-minded in a way. Um, Bob and I had to stretch farther because he used to write an omniscient third person and I'm very close limited third person and he wrote very cold thrillers and of course I write romantic comedy and he came a lot farther than I did. He compromised a lot. But I, there were things where he'd say, no, it has to, you know, there was a body count now. People kept dying because he was writing the books. And um, I think the books became deeper because he was in them. And he dragged me into places I didn't want to go, which was so good for me. And the same way with writing with um, Eileen and Chrissy and, and Lonnie and Chrissy. Although writing with Lonnie and Chrissy, it's like a party all the time. You know, we... I can imagine. I've, yes. I've met them, so I can imagine. So we, um, but basically we've set up markers in the text. At this point in the text, this is what, there'll be a scene and everybody will be there and this is what will happen. And at the halfway point, this will happen. And at the dark moment, this will happen. And at the climax, this will happen. They all have the same antagonist. And then we just start bringing people, you know, we've got, it's not an outline, but we've got this much. And we say, well, in the first act, my heroine's going to do this. And we slot that in and see how they interact. And, so it's a little bit more structured, but not a lot more. We still have a lot of freedom within it. Would you say it takes you longer to collaborate than it does writing by no, yourself? No, it's probably shorter. Um, for one thing, I'm just a very slow writer, and they're all faster than I am. So, you know, they're kind of dragging me along, you see. Um, and also, I don't hit those spaces where I'm staring into space going, I have no clue what happens next. And I don't, you know, you don't have those moments of panic, because they're always there to, to carry you. So it's been, um, I don't think it takes me much less, because I'm a slow writer. Um, I know Bob says now it takes him a lot longer to write a solo because he's writing <laughs> with me. But I, I think it comes out to about the same. Okay, so uh, with, with Bob Mayer, you've been, you've been writing, this is going to be your third book. Third book comes out in March. Comes out in March. Um, why don't we go through maybe the first two just a little bit? Because there, okay. is, there is an evolution that I've been seeing at There least. absolutely is an evolution. Uh, don't look down. It was a very interesting book for me. I wasn't exactly sure what to expect when I heard, you know, right. having a, a male co-author is, for me, was a little jarring. Yes. Well, wait a second. How, how's that going to well, work? Well, that's what I wanted. I, the, the thing with, uh, it's very hard to write realistic men without putting the gloss of what you'd like a man to be over that. And to a certain extent, you do that in romance because they are fantasies, but they do have to have some basis in reality. And I thought this would be, um, we met at the Maori Writers Conference. He said, yes, we collaborate. And I thought, you know, if he writes the man and I write the woman, my readers for the first time will be getting a real guy writing the men. You know, he may not be doing the things they want, but it'll be real. And also, I can learn so much from this guy. And that was the excitement that, that jarring. But we did, we spent a lot of time promoting that book to make sure that people knew how we were doing it. You know, we did a blog and everything so that people understood that he was writing the male half and I was writing the female half. Um, so that, that that part was really interesting, that that was going to be really valuable. Um, but I was having problems then. I had just gone through menopause and I couldn't write. And he carried me through that book. I had a heck of a time connecting with my heroine, not because of him, but just because my brain chemistry was all. Mm -hmm. So he was fabulous. He carried me through the whole book. And I think if there's a weakness in that book, it's that I never quite connected with my heroine. I loved her. I loved the kid. I loved the Wonder Woman stuff. I had a great time. But there's just a moment when you move into a book and suddenly you understand that woman. And I just never got there. So poor old Bob carried me through that whole book. God bless him. And okay, then book number two. Agnes, we got it. 
I connected with Agnes. He was dead. You know, he was finally, you know, into this whole romantic comedy mode. I think his stuff is brilliant in that book. He is wonderful. And I just, I had so much fun because he was always so violent. I could finally do this violent hero. And the, the way I had originally written the book, um, the guy breaks into her kitchen and she hits him with a cast iron frying pan and he gets up and she hits him again and that's when and Bob emailed me the first time he read it he said, Jenny, you hit somebody with a cast iron frying pan once and they stay down. And I thought, damn. So I had to write it as a Teflon frying pan. You know, this is how he's very good at death. He knows exactly what kills people and what. But um, yeah, I love that book. I dearly love that book. I think it may be one of the best yeah. ones. You know, the best. It just, and his stuff is brilliant. There is, there is, it, it's such an interesting mix of violence and oddness. Yes. And I funny. would be the oddness. <laughs> he would be the violence. And the funny, where does the funny come from? Both of us. He has a very different sense of humor. It's very low key. You know, he never breaks a smile. It's very deadpan. But he had some just wonderful moments in there. And then I just, I, I had such a good time being that angry. You know, Agnes, she just doesn't take any prisoners. And she was just so much fun. So, yeah, I really love that one.